This is the Friday Night Fever Afterburn, sponsored by Peden Heating and Air Conditioning. Welcome to Friday Night Fever Afterburn. Week five of the high school football season is in the books. We are here for the very first time as a duo. <laughs> Myself, of course, Sam Granville and Carly Koskovich. She joined on last week, introduced herself on Kaylee's last week, and now yeah. we are the new sports team here at WMBB and News 13. Carly, how was your first Friday Night Fever? It was really fun, actually. I had to drive all the way out to Bluntstown. That was <laughs> awesome. Um, but it was it was fun. It was a good game, actually. Bluntstown and Taylor County. So, I don't know. I'm yeah. excited to talk about it. We'll get to those scores yeah. in just a second. We're going to go ahead and dive right in. I'll take the first list. You'll take the second list. We'll go back and forth. So, again, like she mentioned, Taylor County and Bluntstown. That was our fan-voted Fan voted Friday Night Fever game of the week. We put that one to a poll this week. Blundstown fan said, "Hey, come to Bulls Field." We went to Bulls Field. Uh, it was a close battle, six yeah. to seven. We'll get into the highlights in just a minute, but it was six to seven at the half, and then Taylor County pulled away big, twenty-seven to six is the mm -hmm. final. I went to the Mosley Escambia game, homecoming for the Dolphins. They go into the half up thirty-one to seven, and they win thirty-eight to thirteen. Arnold and Rutherford. That was one that was on our list, you know, for Friday Night Fever game of the week. That was a great match. It goes down to the wire. Arnold winning by three, 29 to 26. And then Port St. Joe taking the field for the very first time uh, in, in the last couple of weeks since, of course, their star football player, Chance Gaynor, uh, died a couple weeks back. They get the win for Chance. Again, we'll get into those highlights in a second, but 21 to 12, Port St. Joe. Take this list, Carly. Yeah, so Bozeman and Sneeds. Oh, Bozeman took the lead on that one, 43 to 20. And then Bay, Bay and Madison County. Sorry, I'm still learning all of these <laughs> teams. But Madison County, 42 to 14. And then Franklin County against Rocky Bayou, taking the lead for, or one. Franklin County, 25 to 13. And then Vernon and Freeport. Freeport took that lead, 32 to 8. Bear with us. We have a lot of scores tonight, but we're going to check in on the next one. Florida High, they are a phenomenal ball club over there in Tallahassee. They win 55 to 13 over South Walton. Holmes County back on their home field tonight. They win a one score game, uh, beating Northview 34 to 27. Mariana, still undefeated this season. They're now 5 and 0. WS Neal, they. Look like they can put up some points, 49 to 36, Mariana. And then Cottondale, they've been averaging about 40, 50 points a game so far. They put up 54 tonight, 54 to 28. You got this one again. All right. So we have Miller County Pirates and Liberty County. Oh, pff, wow. Miller <laughs> County, 42 to zero. Li Oof. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jefferson County, 18 to Weewahitchka, 16. That seems close. The North Bay Haven, 20. Baker took the win on that one, 42 to 20. And then Chipley and Jay. That was, the that was night game. Oh, oh yeah, last. yeah. That was they were both undefeated, right? Right. They were yeah. both undefeated going to that one. And okay. Not just Jay's undefeated. Not just Jay's undefeated. Right. Well, Sorry, Chipley. 13 Jay in that game last night. Well, we're gonna go ahead and start with our game of the week. Uh, again, didn't turn out to be the best game, but neither did Mosley. That one was also up for, you know, game of the week vote. We're going to go ahead and hop right in. Just tell me, you know, what was your first Friday night experience like? You know, I know you shot a game last week, but, you know, this was your game for your show. <laughs> tell me about just the, the experience going live at Bulls Field. How would you, how'd you feel out there watching the Tigers? I wish you would have let me stay longer, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, because it was really close at halftime, 7-6. to six. Uh, Taylor County was winning, but it, it, I was really, like, walking to the – parking lot thinking okay someone's about to score but no one scored until the second half and then taylor county ran away with it but it was really it was a good game i really loved the small town and how everybody was out there it was new like i've never really experienced something like that and i just thought it was super fun and yeah they were really good actually it was pretty even i feel like Right. And, you know, just for background, Carly is from the Phoenix area. So yeah. a different high school football scene from rural Panhandle, Florida. You know, 
she's like, man, all the way to Bluntstown. Yeah, wait till you have to drive to Franklin <laughs> County or to Funiac Spring or any of those even further schools. So uh, still learning the area. But yeah, Bluntstown, yeah. they've gone to the Final Four in back-to-back -back seasons. They're the only team around here that's gone to the Final Four in back-to-back -back seasons. We talked about it earlier. They graduated a ton of seniors. Uh, we sent one, uh, one went to Texas A&M, one went to South Florida, one went to Miami. They got so many players that graduated this past year. They're so young. You notice, you know, Sion Smith, man, he's a young kid that can play. Kyan Martin, you know, another kid that can play ball. Tristan King leading the offense. But this is a very oh young gosh. team. And for them to compete with a school like Taylor County, to keep it, you know, seven to six at the half, that's just that just shows me, okay, Coach Brad Wagner, he's got them going in the right direction. These kids, they he he said the other day, you know, on Wednesday, I talked to Coach Wagner and he said, Yeah, uh, we're two and zero right now. We look pretty solid. We're gonna take some lumps this year. Uh, good luck playing us in a couple years from now. So, you know, when those guys like Sion Smith, Kay and Martin, when when they start getting older and they're the upperclassmen, watch out for those blunts honestly players. i was really impressed with tristan king i was like okay so he's punting he's kicking <laughs> and he's a quarterback i was i, I thought it was pretty impressive so and a baseball player very good and baseball player the more you know wow <laughs> I, <laughs> wait these guys play on both sides of the ball, but yeah a lot of these schools around here play on both sides of the ball but again taylor county they beat a wakola team you know that was a uh, a class two or three a team that went to the region finals last year so so taylor county is a very very good team this season so again the score might not show that you know rural bluntstown hung around very well at the end but man if you're the bluntstown tigers you, you gotta uh you, you can't really hang your hat you know on that one too much it, it was a definitely a uh, a tough way to end up losing in the second half, but still, you're two and one right now. You're in a good position moving forward. I'm gonna check in on the comments. We haven't really looked down here yet. I see some uh, Hornets faithful down there. Cottonale staying unbeaten. So I think at this point we're down to four teams. The Hornets, uh, they are one of them. Mosley is another. Bluntstown was one. Uh, so I guess that leaves Franklin County and Mariana. So Mariana Mosley. Franklin County, and who else did I just say? Yeah, Cottondale. So those are our four teams unbeaten after tonight. Um, we got Madison County beating up on Bay High. Yeah, I can tell you, you know, Madison County is a rural team, but they would beat most larger schools around the area. I saw when Bozeman went to the Final Four last year, they played Madison County. I went to Boot Hill in Madison. Those guys put up like 66 points against a incredible Bozeman team last year. So uh, Madison County always has some fantastic athletes and players. They go ahead and, and get a big win over Bay tonight. Writing that down. Yeah, keep, take the, take those notes. I see a proud of you, Big Blue. There's a lot of Big Blues, but uh, I know uh, I'm going to I'm gonna assume that's Holmes County. A lot of Big Blue. Correct me if I'm wrong in assuming that your Big Blue is, is Holmes County. I have uh, a request to be sent to Niceville. Niceville. What, where? That could be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> where is Niceville? Niceville way to the west. Okay. Uh, I say way. It's about an hour and a half. Okay. Now. So manageable. Uh, and we will, I can't remember, is Mosley in Niceville, is that going to be in uh, here or is that going to be at Niceville? Uh, I think that's in a couple of weeks. That would be the only game, and that's at Mosley. So, sorry, we're not going to be going to Niceville this season. It is the – you'll have to look it up. You'll have to look it up on YouTube. It is probably one of the best high school football atmospheres in really? the country. I hate it. <laughs> we're probably not going there. It's a little out of our coverage distance. But when they come to Mosley, when they come there this year, we're definitely going to be there. I'm sure that will probably be uh, a big pull for our game of the week. Their student section is unlike any other. Again, hate that we don't cover them, but nice Phil, they, they got it going over there. Uh, come to East Point. Coach Cooper and the guys, will, again, we'll get to them in a minute. They are 5-0. and 2-0 was their best start in recent history. Then they went to 3-0, now 4-0, 5-0. They're making history over there in East Point with Franklin County and those Seahawks. Uh, Tigers are tough. Never want to get up, give up. That's a Bluntstown super fan, Laura Pope. And Franklin County Seahawks. So we got some more Mosley down there. Keep us commenting. We're going to go ahead and get into that Mosley game in a second. But keep telling us about your favorite scores of the night, your favorite teams, you know, who impressed you the most. But let's go ahead and roll those Mosley highlights and uh, get into that. So, again, homecoming for homecoming. Mosley. It was a packed crowd. <clears throat> and, like, 
I said in Friday Night Fever, if you missed the show, it was the Fletcher Taylor show. This is a sophomore tight end. For all you Mosley fans that remember Randy Pittman, he's now a tight end at UCF. Uh, he was a freshman, all Big 12 team his freshman year. He reminds me, Fletcher Taylor reminds me of Randy Pittman. He scored the first touchdown. He got the two-point conversion. Escambia did get a great play here. Uh, this was uh, definitely not the, the coverage that Mosley wanted, but check out this next play. I'm just going to let you know in advance. Escambia has a player on their football team. He'll be committing tomorrow. He's got offers from LSU, Ole Miss, Mississippi State. This is going to be him attempting the tackle on Fletcher Taylor. Yeah, yeah, that's a sophomore. Fletcher Taylor bulldozing a four-star commit that can basically go anywhere he wants. That is a sophomore. Have I said that that's a sophomore yet? Yeah, but he's got a lot of that's grit. A sophomore. I can see why he's <laughs> got a lot of offers. And then Lucavion Jackson, we know we know what he offers. He's the Mississippi State commit. He transferred in this off uh, last offseason. This is his first season. Again, just anytime he's got the ball in his hands, there's a good chance that he's going to score. Mosley, so many athletes, so many players. They did have a little bit of trouble with the refs tonight. Uh, I don't know if that got worked out. Uh, they did not like them flying the drone over the field for whatever reason. <laughs> they were you okay. know, running the offense, and, and they didn't like the, the drone buzzing above them. Um, and this was a what they called a fumble sammy uh chisholm was just sitting there on top of the pile for about two seconds they never blew the whistle refs call it a hey, fumble a scambia ball yeah mosley responds by getting a safety on uh, you know the next play so it's clearly this is another um one-sided game in mosley's favor they've got so many players this team just excites me more and more every week they remind me of that 2021 team I think, in my personal opinion, I think this team is better. You know, it's hard to compare, you know, years and, and eras. Again, there were some fantastic players on that 2021 team that ended up making a deep run. This team is so good. And, yeah, the gotta, homecoming gotta kings love the we love. Guys, up there. They guys give me a wave, and they're like, why? But, yeah, go Mosley. They got a 38-13 to victory. Again, your first game that you got to see here was Thursday night mm -hmm. last week. Yeah. You went and watched Mosley with me. You got to shoot some of that game. How, how have they just impressed you and, and just so many weapons that they have? Oh, my God. I'm just looking at him right now. He could... God, he could take that team himself. <laughs> I don't want to say anything bad about Escambia, but he, that, he's a unit, and he is going to go far. I don't know what his background or future is going to hold, but <laughs> just by himself. And then, yeah, no. It's, it's just strength. It's just, like, they just keep, he, he keeps going. And that's, <laughs> like, what I saw last week. And I just honestly, like, I feel like I saw that exact play when we were shooting Mosley last week. It was just run straight there was what'd you say just grass and then the end zone <laughs> yeah nothing between him <laughs> and grass there, like i said there's so many athletes you know we we know the raiden bruins we know he's going to rutgers we know lakavian jackson going to mississippi state but then there's so many more carson grissom griffin adam land you know there's so many guys that can score the ball sammy chisholm he stepped up in recent weeks uh and the defense their bend not break that offensive line uh, spoiler alert, we're going to have our Scholar Athlete of the Week on Sunday. That is going to be Logan McAllister, so t stay tuned for Carly on News 13 this mm -hmm. weekend. The offensive line is phenomenal for Mosley this year. Uh, and I see my son was on the 2021 team, and I agree. This team is better than the 2021 team. That's a bold claim. They okay. went very far, and they were very good. But I would have to say this is a more complete, more depth. They've got so many weapons from you know the upperclassmen to the underclassmen making plays each week. I want to, you know, you you hate to say it as a Mosley fan when you're, you know, playing the other schools, you know, but I want to see them challenged this year. I don't know if that's going to come until Niceville. I don't know what Milton's going to look like uh, next week. I know they're going to, they always have to take their bye before Niceville. Um, you know, Coach Witt and he likes to strategically plan, give himself a bye week ahead of facing okay. Niceville. That's the big rivalry really? we're learning over here. Okay, rivalry gotcha. and Mosley is a huge rivalry. Uh, we'll get to that one in a couple weeks, but I'd love to see Mosley challenge this year. Year. They can clearly uh, score points and they can clearly win, but can they win tight games? We'll see. Let's it's, have Niceville bring like a charter bus of all of their student section. They probably will. Really? They'll, they'll probably bring a lot of folks over here and, and their band. Again, look it up on YouTube. It's cute. I'm hyping up Niceville. We don't even cover them, but go Eagles. Taylor County actually did that. I was just, I was yeah, surprised. And yeah, I don't, well, as parents, okay. they all got okay. on the charter bus and came to the field that's one way to do it how far is that from 
Taylor County, that's uh past that's past Tallahassee. So it's 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 a it's a little haul. Not okay. not as far of Bluntstown to Panama City, but it's a little haul. Uh, let's go ahead. We're, we're already slowing things down. Let's go ahead and get to the Arnold and Rutherford game again. Like I keep mentioning week after week after week, Rutherford is probably the best winless team in the area and they battle every week. And I know that when you're, uh, losing each week in these close games, you hate to see it. Uh, again, I don't, I don't know if you guys are seeing the, the, uh, delay on the video that we are. I hope that you can hear us, but Rutherford, uh, they lose another close one, and they went into the half with a, a lead, just like they went into a half with the lead against Holmes County, just like they went into the half with a lead um, against Bluntstown. This is a team that competes, and then in the second half, it's heartbreak. But you got to give it to the Arnold Marlins. Again, we're still learning the area. Arnold last season, 0-9. No, they sorry. got outscored by opponents, I think we said 476 to 12 last year. Oh. Arnold 0 9, 476 to 12. They're now 4 and 1. 4 and 1. Coach Griffin and that crew are now 4 and 1, starting off the season with just that first loss uh, against South Walton last week. They came for revenge. Yeah. And uh, last year's coach um, at Bozeman, Jason mm -hmm. Griffin, he's now at Arnold. He's got that program completely revitalized, okay. turned around. You got to give it to the Marlins. You know, they're not only are they uh, able to compete in games, they're winning games, they're winning close games. They've won multiple close games this year. Um, are, 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 is everybody seeing what I'm seeing, Spencer? Are we are we slowing down? Oh, well, I hope I hope that you know you can see the highlights. It is coming in and out. But again, congratulations to those Marlins. Uh, I hate it for Coach Floyd. You know he keeps telling me at Rutherford. He's like, man, say everybody keeps telling me I'm proud of you guys. You know you're battling in there next week. You know the program looks like they're headed in the right direction. He's like, but I just want to win. You know, and I was like, I get it, Coach. I'm the same way. I hate losing and. And this is another very, very tough battle for Rutherford. Have you seen either of these teams yet in person? Uh, you know, I went to Arnold Volleyball. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's good my... Arnold. She's been on campus, yes. ladies and gentlemen. She's been Looking forward to seeing this campus. team. So. Um, well, yeah, another big win for Arnold. And before we head to the next game, take another peek at the comments. Uh, Matthew Nichols is saying that Taylor County is from Perry. So that's going to be over near... Uh, what I-10 and we're kind of kind of closer to where um, I-10 and and 75 meet geography yeah not, not doesn't mean that. much you're to like me cool <laughs> that, that sounds great hope to see Rutherford pick up a win this year a lot of great players yeah we saw that game against Bluntstown go to triple overtime um, so we're gonna go ahead and move to the next game uh, Port St. Joe and Destin I hope that you guys are able to be hearing us and seeing us again apologize for any technical difficulties we're gonna keep rolling uh, we still good we rolling all right gotcha okay we're rolling this one again apologize for any technical difficulties this game was just special tonight Port St. Joe playing for the very first time um, since Chance Gainer passed away a couple weeks ago, they they decided, hey, we want to play for Chance this year. Um, we want to play for him. His his mom was like, hey, go play for my son. I, I want to see you guys out on the field this year. In their first game back, they go on the road and defeat Destin, 21 to 12. Um, you know, there was number twos all over. We had the the bows and the cheerleaders' hair. You know, we had number twos all over the field. Players pointing up every time they score. That That's a special game over there. Again, we normally don't go all the way to Destin. That's kind of like a nice bill. It's one that's a little out of our range. But I said, I want to be there tonight. Mm -hmm. I want to have somebody there. I want video, right. you know, in case these guys go and win and win or lose. But, you know, it was, it was just fun to see them, you know, get that win tonight. Exciting to see them do it for a chance. And, and, and that's just special. This is more than football when you see mm -hmm. stuff like this. No, it's you know, personal, when, when you sure. When you see that personal element, when you see everybody wearing those number twos and, and making uh, making Chance proud because mm -hmm. I know that he's looking down and smiling on him and, and you know, going, hey, I, I appreciate that, guys. I appreciate <laughs> that. We're, let's keep going next week after, after the other. So mm -hmm. a big win for St. Joe. They win that 27 to 12. Um, again, apologize for any uh, technical uh, video. If, we're, if you're having any issues watching us, I apologize. 
Um, we're going to roll into the next one. We're going to try and speed things up a little bit. Uh, are we, how are we doing, Spencer? I'm not sure. um, we're having just as much fun as you guys are. <laughs> okay. We're, we're going to do our best. Let us, let us know if you can see us. I hope that you Turn can it, see listen us. Turn this into a I, podcast. Still, still seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we can, we can go dark on it and you can just listen to us, but that's not near as fun as watching the big plays and everything. Uh, I see from John Brock, Liberty County carried a number two PSJ jersey on the field to honor Chance Gainer special moments before the game. And yeah, that's one thing that, you know, we said last week and, and just continue going forward, just the support of the panhandle of the community. You know, you mentioned the small town mm -hmm. schools and in and, and Bluntstown, everybody just rallying around Port St. Joe over the For last sure. couple of weeks. And it, it's been exciting to watch. We do have the highlights mm -hmm. of one more game. We're going to go ahead and get into that one. You uh, have gotten to see Bozeman a little bit mm -hmm. this year. Tell me yeah. what you thought of, of Bozeman pulling away in the second half here against Neats. I'm honestly happy for Bo for Bozeman. Like I went over there the other day and interviewed the coach and uh, one of their players. And honestly, like he he was saying that his guys were a little bit younger than he's used to, but he's also new. And so I'm rooting. For, I, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm rooting for the best for them. And yeah, I I'm glad that, well, they were able to pull it through in the second half because first half, well, you know, they didn't really know if that was going to happen. Right. And again, you know, we're learning. We're learning each week. Bozeman, that is the team that now Arnold's uh, coach is at. Last year he yes. was at Bozeman. They went to the Final Four for the first time in school history. They moved up in classifications this year. So last year they were in the rural classification. This year they're in Class 2A. So they're playing against a rural team in Sneeds. And clearly some adjustments were made at the half because to, to go from being down, what we say, 14 to 6 at the half or something like that, and then going and winning this one 43 to 20, that, that's some halftime adjustments. And, and you've been looking for, we've been scratching Catching the surface with this Bozeman team of, you know, just how good can they be? You got the young quarterback and Hayden Gay throwing to all these weapons all over the field. Mm -hmm. uh, Bozeman in a similar way is, is kind of, you know, uh, uh, a, we'll say a poor man's Mosley in the sense that, you know, they've just got a lot of weapons, a lot of guys that have played a lot of football. Uh, we say Colton McClellan, John Boy Hansen, Lakota Johnson. I don't think that he was playing tonight, but he's been fantastic this mm -hmm. season. You got all those North Bay Haven transfers coming in this year uh, with Spurlock brothers. So th they've got weapons to use this year. We've kind of been waiting to see, okay, can they figure it mm -hmm. out? Clearly, uh, the defense figured it out in the second half. I, I had uh, one of their coaches tell me defense forced four turnovers for Bozeman tonight. So you got to be happy about that looking at the score sheet. But, you know, like you said, first year coach, he's yep. coming in, he's learning these players, he's learning the system. And they had a rough start, you know, losing a game to Arnold. They've mm -hmm. had some, some uh, rough losses to start the year. They needed this one. The sad thing is Sneeds also needed this one. Yeah. So both these teams kind of really needed a win tonight, and Bozeman was the one to walk away with it because you really have to have this win uh, when you're in a higher classification like two-way because you got Mariana, you got Rutherford, both in your district. You've already taken the loss to Mariana, so you really need this one if you're Bozeman if you want to be competing for the playoffs mm -hmm. in a couple weeks. I can only imagine uh, what he said at halftime to those boys. Right, and I, I'm looking down, I'm seeing <laughs> game of the week was definitely Franklin County, Liberty County, and Nail Miter on Monday night. Yeah, we did not mention that one. I did have it uh, in the show on Monday night through uh, the NFHS network. Um, so that was a fantastic game. Uh, Coach Cooper and, and the gang in, in Franklin County pulling off a nail biter. Um, it, that one really was a fantastic game. I would have loved to have been there. I was working solo on Monday night. wasn't able to get all the way over to Bristol, but that was a fantastic game. That's when Franklin County started 4-0, and then with a quick turnaround Monday to Friday, 5-0. So again, Coach Cooper and the gang, congratulations. You're off to a great start. We're going to definitely get back over to East Point later on this season to just – Wrap up those scores once again. Madison County falling 42 to 14 to Bay. Franklin County winning 25 to 13. They're 5 0. Freeport bouncing back from that beatdown uh, that they took against Cottondale last week. They win 32 to 8. 
Uh, South Walton falling to a very, very good Florida High team. Holmes County, 34-27 the victory. Mariana, 49-36. Cottondale, 54-28. Uh, again, we're going to have to double-check that score average for the season. I think it's got to be near 50 right now. Liberty County getting shut out at home. Jefferson County beating Weewa in a very close one. And then uh, North Bay Haven, that, of course, has been the story over the last couple of days. Interim head coach stepping in. A lot of uh, confusion around the program right now. They, of course, have not won any games this year. We've mentioned over and over this year all those players transferring out in the mm -hmm. offseason with the coaching changes. A dozen going to Bozeman, a couple more going to Arnold. So clearly uh, not the season that you know they anticipated starting in the spring, but 20 points. They had two coming into tonight. So this is far and away it's the big best night offense for them. performance. <laughs> Far and away their best offensive performance. Two to 20 points. They now have 22 points on the season. We were talking about can they get past Arnold's 12 points last year. They did that tonight. So uh, hey. congratulations to North Bay Haven. We'll, we'll have to continue to you know follow up and see where that goes. Definitely a messy situation at North Bay Haven right now. And then Chipley taking their first loss, 23 to 13. That was last night. I uh, see from Coach Old, great football this week. Got to uh, got to agree with you. This was a lot of fun. This is one of those weeks where I'm looking at all the matchups and I'm like, I don't know, like, like you know, what are the games to look out for mm -hmm. this week? And and they really did uh, impress. Mm -hmm. So I gotta say, for it sure. was good. Um, Put Carly on the North Bay Haven story. We need details. Yeah, trust me. We're going to be working on it. Trust me. Keep following us on News 13. We got a lot more coming from that one. We're going to look at next week's games, and then we're going to tell you guys goodnight. We're already going a little long. Uh, start off with this first list and those matchups, and then I'll take the next one. Gosh, give me the long, weird name. Sorry. <laughs> Wewa Hitchka versus Cottondale and Holmes County versus Chipley. Big rivalry. Okay. Mariana versus Rutherford and Port St. Joe versus Bozeman. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Trust me, you didn't say, uh, you said Rutherford wrong because it's spelled wrong. We're going to give Spencer oh. that one there. So, Rutherford. Rutherford? Yes. <laughs> Rutherford. <laughs> South Walton at Walton. That's a big rivalry as well in Got Walton it. County. St. Francis Catholic, never heard of them. They're going to North Bay Haven next week <laughs> for homecoming. Liberty County at Sneeds and Bluntstown at W.S. Neal. They Scored a lot of points on a very good Mariana team tonight, so that one could be interesting. Ooh. Take this list. Here. All right, Ar Arnold. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm oh. just, I'm just. Chalk to Hatchie. Chalk, chalk to Hatchie. <laughs> Choctaw. They're Choctaw. Choctaw. Okay. Arnold <laughs> versus Choctaw, and then Mosley <laughs> versus Milton Bay versus Pensacola, and Freeport versus Pensacola Catholic. That Arnold game is a Thursday, by the way. Asilla Christian versus Franklin County. Again, Coach Cooper and the guys looking to start six and zero. If I told you right now, Franklin County is looking to start the season six and zero. There's probably not very many people outside of the Franklin County locker room that would be like, "Yeah, yeah, I see that happening." So. Once again, I've said it over and over and over again tonight, but congratulations to the Franklin County Seahawks. And that is also without one of their best players, Sadiq Jones. Broke his collarbone a couple weeks ago. He is out for the season. We're going to have to see him back uh, next year or in baseball or basketball because uh. he does everything over there in East Point. Vernon Yellow Jackets, they are on a bye. So once again, like we said, Carly, new to the area she's I'm really... learn, learning these teams <laughs> i totally on purpose gave her we were hitchka and chalk to hatchie we'll uh, <laughs> continue to learn those but again how, after one night how are yeah feeling? How are we feeling? I'm, I'm very impressed with the amount of dual sport tri-sport athletes in this area I, I it's awesome honestly so we're gonna uh <laughs> definitely just be continuing to dive in and learn in a couple of weeks she's gonna be throwing these crazy stats and and once again i told you guys last week I, for whoever was here there's one person uh on the friday night fever that has anchored the friday night fever afterburn show one person in the history of the show that has played high school football it's not me it's carly <laughs> She put, was place kicker at high. She's like, oh, you're putting me on this. I just right knew <laughs> where, right where this was going as soon as you started that. So <laughs> Again, she has more on-field expertise than I ever will. So 
She might not know the area like I do, but she does know football. So we're going to well, continue to learn the area uh, <laughs> more and more and continue to move on with the season. Next week is week six. I appreciate all of the viewers. It's been fun to this point. We're near the half point of the season. That's just crazy to say. But that is going to do it for week five. If you want to watch all the highlights, they'll be posted on mypanhandle.com. Until next week, y'all have a good one.